All right, so our site, we created one blog post. Let's do it a little bit better. Since I keep saying that blogs are important, let's look at how it's to be done a little better. I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and we'll click on the posts just to look at all the posts again. We've got the post from last week and the post I just made. Well, right here, uh, we've got categories and we've got tags. So if you click on categories, this is where you can get a list of the categories that you've created. And if you misspelled something, here's where we can change it. Notice if you hover over, you can click edit or quick edit. So this is one category. If I want to create more categories, I easily have the box right here to name a new category. As I said, I recommend create categories first and then write articles about them. So from this screen is where I can create the names of these categories. So I would type a, a, a human readable word here, capital spaces, etc. This will automatically then add itself to the slug. The slug is the URL friendly, the computer friendly version, which is lowercase with dashes. This will fill itself in. So if I write tasty cakes, this will fill itself in with tasty lowercase dash cakes. You don't, you don't really need to change slug. But one of my categories of things that I'm trying to write about is gluten-free. I could create another category called like classic recipes. I wrote it normally. It will, after I save it, it will fill itself in classic-recipes. Parent is completely optional, but this gives you the example of if you have a category of jazz, a parent category of jazz. Children categories are bebop and big band. So I have a top level of kinds of categories and then a sub-level of categories. In my case, I don't need that at the moment. And there's a spot for a description. When we created the category in the middle of creating the blog, it did not have this. Description is not prominent by default, however, some themes may show it. So depending on the theme, that answer, that response that I said I'm going to say a lot, depending on the theme, you get different features. So this theme may or may not display this description, but it's another spot where I can write keywords that help me get found. So I could write something like our bakery features many classic recipes with organic ingredients. Here's where I'm going to throw in the keyword of organic. I, I wasn't going to put it up on the name, but I put it in the description. Even if it's not visible on screen, it may, be, it, it may not be visible to people, but remember, be, behind the scenes, every WordPress site is made out of code. So it might not be visible to people, but it may be in your code somewhere, and the search engine can see that. So I would recommend create categories first, and then descriptions, and then add new description, and then create posts based on your categories. Add a description to the category for more SEO. Help. Add one to three categories to a post. You can put one uh, article into more than one uh, category, that's fine, but don't go overboard by putting it into seven categories. Then you're diluting yourself. You, uh, you're spreading out your content into too many categories, that is not helping you. Let me show you an example here. I might have shown this site previously. If you want to open a new window, you can go to vmcinc.net, vmcink.net. This is one of the sites that I'm involved in. This has a blog. This is social media, web design, and more. If I hover over blog, I get a drop-down menu. If I click blog itself, it'll show me every blog article in order. So the latest blog, a 
appears there, and then the one before it in sequence. But if I hover over, instead I want to jump to blog posts just about financial or just about social media or web design, miscellaneous. If I go look at tutorial, it's going to show me all blogs that are categorized into tutorial. This one, because of the theme, shows the category here. It's social media and tutorial. This one over here is simply tutorial. This one is under tutorial. So we'll see how to do that a, a little bit later, uh, creating this drop-down of categories. We've seen menus of pages and custom links, and it's not too difficult then to add drop-down menus of categories. We'll, we'll come back to it in a bit. But here's the, our idea that categories are important. For us here, uh, I would think of a few before I start writing. I would write, uh, create, a, create a, like six or seven or something categories, and then start to write articles eventually. So on this site, there are articles about resources. There's a few of those. A few articles on miscellaneous. These are, this is the concept of categories, ways to organize my posts. I can create more than one, I can attach more than one, they help with my SEO. Um, any questions on categories? Let's go to tags, which is related. So thinking in these terms, Categories for Victor's Bakery. Cakes, cookies, pies, the big concepts. Tags for Victor's Bakery. Chocolate, vanilla, gluten-free, sometimes there's no easy differentiator. Should it be a category? Should it be a tag? I used gluten-free a moment ago as a category. That wasn't wrong, and it would not be wrong if I use it under tag. But you don't want the same tags and the same categories. What I'm trying to do here is the big concepts. I'm going to have gluten-free pies. I'm going to have gluten-free cakes. I'm going to have vanilla cookies, vanilla pies. You see, these are like the fine-tuned details of an article. These are the big ideas of the article. So let's say um, uh, as a realtor, the big idea for categories, my big categories would be San Diego, Chula Vista, Bonita, La Jolla, the big ideas of properties. Then the smaller ideas, you know, single-family home, uh, affordable, first-time homeowner. Again, sometimes these categories and tags bleed into each other, but think about them in those terms. The big idea, the small idea. And what I say about tags, I usually, so recommendation, develop uh, tags after you write the blog. Develop categories before, but develop tags after. Develop tags after writing an article. For me, I find that once I have the big idea, I'm going to write an article about cakes, and I start to write 100 words. Then as I reread my finished 100 words, I find the tags. I find that I use the keyword or the tag pecan or organic and so forth. So I add the tags after I write the article. That's what works for me. And you could, of course, develop all your tags before you write the articles. That's fine. For me, what's worked is make categories first, then the article, then add tags. Categories, create categories.
and then write the article and add the tags. So there's still a lot of nuances re regarding blogs, and if you're not able to take the blogging class, let me show you the next best thing. Yes? Tags, are they behind the scenes too? It depends on the theme. Let's look at this one over here. If I look at a blog post, how to use mastodon.social, this one is showing this category really straightforward, but actually looking on it, uh, I'm not seeing, in this case, I'm not seeing the tags right away. So it's going to depend on the theme where the tags will appear. And most likely somewhere behind the scenes in the code it will be in there, at least. So if you can't take the, um, the blogging class, here's a simple distillation of it. If you go to pmdinteractive.com, this is another site I'm involved in, pmdinteractive.com, if you go to the blog of PMD Interactive, there is the blog checklist, part one, part two, part three. So you'll get very, in general, ideas that you would get out of the blogging class if you go to pmdinteractive.com and then view the blog. So above on the blog, the blog checklist part three, part two, part one. So steps to do before you start writing, steps to do as you're writing, and then steps to do after you write. We go into much more detail on all of these in the blogging class. If you're not able to attend, at least there's something to get you to get you on the right track. So let's say I've got some categories, I've got some tags, um, I want to write an article. Do you see in PMD Interactive, for example, uh, there's a snippet, it's not the whole article. If I want to read the whole article, I can, I can click to view more. That's the same sort of thing over on VMC Inc. Usually you see that in that there's a preview, there's a snippet, how to use Mastodon Social, continue reading. Depending on the theme, some will say read more, continue reading, whatever, how to record a podcast, I'm not interested, next, top five ETFs for your 2015 RA, I am interested, I'll read more. So it's best practice not to have your whole article on your blog preview page. It's best to have a snippet and some kind of read more. Let's see how we can do that. Tip. And only a snippet. Preview the blog post. And then read more. That way people click through to read what they want to read. Have you been to a website where you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to see the next thing, but you're forced to see something you don't want to see? You have to scroll past it to find what you really want. Mm -hmm. So that was me that meant that wasn't a good web designer. They they didn't, you know, edit it, they didn't preview it. I'm not interested in that, but I am interested in that, so I will read that. And then that's gonna be several hundred, you know, several hundred words, a couple of paragraphs. Mm -hmm. If I am interested in that, I'll read it. The way to do that. Let's add a new post. Based on the categories that I've got, classic recipes, gluten-free, I'll choose whatever category, classic recipe. I'm going to write uh, 
easy bake three layer cake. This is an idea of what people may be searching for. How to bake a three layer cake. I have the keywords three layer cake and bake. Is it more effective to create the article how to bake a three layer cake? Maybe. But I have the general keywords and the more of these articles that I write, um, the more it helps me get found. I could start something like, it's easier than you think to create a tasty, and we said earlier, a yummy. It's easier than you think to create a yummy three-layer cake, especially when you're short on time. Here's how. This would be great for me to then choose read more. So to add read more, I write whatever amount of preview or snippet that I want. I press enter, and this is where the read more will appear once I activate the read more button. Insert read more. It looks like, uh, you know, the the stripes on the middle of the road to me, but it's a page divided in another page. So after I wrote something, I can include a picture too. It's a picture, a little text, read more, whatever I want. Usually, some text, read more. On some of those other site examples, there was a picture and some text. Um, but the main idea is to then include insert read more and then press enter. So after I publish it, I will then see only this. Depending on the theme, it might say read more, continue, and we'll have more stuff here. So I'll just put something quickly here to show that there's more, and then publish it. Publish it and then go to your blog, visit site, go to your blog and see how it uh, how it looks. Yes. If you're adding a, if you hmm. talk about it last time, because you're adding the domain, if you did the booting uh, for your uh, index. Mm -hmm. um, how to do it? Well, and you add that link, how do you get it to open in a new page versus. Let me show that right now. It was slightly different than what we did last time, which was in the menu. Okay. So let's say I did write an article and I wanted what is gluten-free to be an active link to go off to Wikipedia. So I would select it. I would then add the, I would click on the insert link and type the address, wikipedia.com, whatever. And then under these options, I'm about to add a link. So I selected it, add a link. Click the link, and then I click the options here, and there'll be a spot right there to open in a new tab, a new window, right there. Open link in new tab. Open link in new tab. After I publish it and, and visit site, that should be an active link. When I click on that, it will open a new, a new tab. So I'll publish, I'll visit site, I'll go to my blog. So based on my theme, here it is, that's what I wrote as a preview. Here's how. Continue reading. Click on that. Now, before I click on it, notice my, my link. Imagine, victorsbakery.com slash blog. I'm in the blog screen. If I continue reading, imagine it's going to say then, victorsbakery.com slash easy bake three layer cake. More. 
is the rest of the more. <coughs> the category of this host is added right there. This theme shows it as a little folder. That's a category. This edit only appears because I'm logged in. If I was not logged in, it would not say edit more. Normal people will not see edit more. Because I'm logged in, it says edit more or edit. And that what is gluten-free, if I click on that, a new window will appear. I linked it to YouTube. That'll open in a new window. Well, first what you want to do is select the text that will be linked, and then the little chain for the link. And I kind of noticed the bug. I typed an address, and it seemed that it was better to first add or apply the link, and then edit it again to go to the options and add the new tab. It looked like when I tried to um, select it and at the same time add a link, like that, it looks like it, yeah, see it didn't add the link. There seems to be a bug, maybe with the theme or maybe with WordPress. So it looks like you want to add the link first, confirm the link, can apply the link, and once it's got the link, then you can edit it to add the open in a new tab. So if I worked with creating some categories first, and then I wrote an article, the third step that I suggested was what? Tags. So let's say I wrote a real article. I reread my article, and I notice keywords in the article. So then I would set tags. I would start to write tags here. So maybe... Uh, chocolate. Yes. Did you save that before you move forward? I did. I did click uh, publish. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I added a tag of chocolate. If I no longer want the tag, I can remove it. I can add multiple tags. Um, my advice for this one, I had said one to three categories. Or tags. Three to five tags per post. So not too many categories and a few more tags, but not too many tags. I don't want to put 12 tags. Again, focus. You want to focus. The big idea is that I have one page on my site about a topic, which Google can find. I have another page about another topic. I don't want to put seven topics on one page. Then it confuses the search engines. It doesn't help you. So here, I don't want 12 or 14 tags on a post. Yes, it does. Yes, I could put the, the tags of sugar and tasty and chocolate and yummy and all of that, but I want you know three or maybe five on the post. The same thing with category. If I can get it across with one category, that's fine. I don't have to do three categories every time. It's one category about pies. That's it. It's not pies and also birthday celebration and, and so forth.
So maybe one more category here. Um, category of, I mean, a tag of easy. Because I could have under classic recipes the easy three layer cake. I might have created a category of um, pies. So I'll have an easy homemade lemon meringue pie. So I'm going to use the, the tag of easy and the category of pie. We have in the content of the post a variety of other styling to do. Um, let's say three-layer cake. Let's say I had it like this. I had um, ingredients. Uh, preparation or steps and notes. So I would like ingredients to stand out. I have bold and such, but I also have headings and such. There's going to be a section on ingredients, a section on steps, a section on notes. Under ingredients, I would write you know, eggs, flour, sugar. And each of these could be bullet points. Under steps, I have uh, eat the eggs, combine flour and sugar, or sift sugar and flour, yes. How do you take it? Sometimes what I'm looking at, sometimes what I'm looking at here isn't exactly what's going to show up on screen. So if I do preview and it looks okay in the preview, then it's done. It's still too much. Now the problem is with a, with a basic WordPress installation, there is not very much ability to style these things like spaces. So the short answer for the moment is we can't really change it. But using other plugins for layout will let us design our, our pages a lot better. The eggs, sift sugar, and flour. These could also be bullet points, but this time numbered bullet points. And notes is a regular paragraph saying heat in. Baked um, best with an electric oven. So I'm just showing uh, I can have these sort of section dividers of content under headings. I can have bullet points, I can have colors. For inspiration about what to write, you can always look at sort of the competition. If I'm a bakery, if I'm a baker and I want to write articles about baking, well, I can I can go look up a baking blog, I can do a search at a search engine, and just go to check out other people's other people's sites. So my baking addiction. Dot com. I haven't seen this, so let's take a look. This has got read more, sugar and walnuts. So it's giving me ideas. How do they design it? Pictures, text, links. 
Fleischmann's. This post is sponsored by Fleischmann's Yeast. Ads, because they want to make money. Lots of pictures. Links elsewhere. They put all of the ingredients really down below. Usually I would think to see it first, but they have it down there, although they do have print recipe. So you would get inspiration from other people's blogs, other company blogs. So I'm not writing this one very seriously, but I've already got 39 words. After you've published it one time, then you'll have update instead of publish. Oh, and lastly here we also have featured image. Depending on the uh, theme, this featured image might be a picture that, that catches your attention. For example, on this site over here, under the blog, the featured image is this first picture that stands out. So I'm looking at an article. This is the first picture that appears. If I continue reading, and the picture's there first, and that was most likely the featured image. See so this featured image. So in general, that's the concept of, uh, of blogging. We go into much more detail in the other class, but any general questions on blogging before going to other topics? Yes? Um, I, I think I may have missed this. Um, when you did the, um, the link for what is going to be great, mm -hmm. you said highlight it, click the link first, and then did you say go back to add it as a separate tab? It seems because there's a little quirk. The way I would do it is, Click to add the link, add the link, and then apply it, and then go back to edit it to go to the option to add it uh, to open in a new window. It used to work that directly you could type it, go to the options, and make it open, but it seems that there's a little bug in it at the moment. Okay, one more thing about uh, blogs, specifically categories. As I'm showing in this site, there's a blog section. Every blog appears here. But then we have a drop-down of actual categories. Articles that have been categorized properly then show up in their own link. Let's see how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. What we'll do is we need to have a few categories set up. We do, you should have at least one or two. Where, remind me, where do I go to edit my menus? Appearance and then menus. So let's go to menus. Appearance menus. We've got our main menu. These are the different items in the menu. Home, contact, blog, etc. These are possible items to add. Look at that, categories. So once we start to create categories, they'll be listed here. Tags is not here. It could be here if you activate screen options. Remember, there's so many options sometimes that they're hidden. If you want to include tags in a menu, you first have to view your screen options and say, show me tags, show me descriptions. So if I do show me tags or formats, things that I've formatted as audio, 
or gallery. What else do we have? Aside and quote. Things that I put into formats, I can choose those to also display in my menu. So I've created these categories. Classic, gluten-free. I can select to add them and then drag them below the blog so that they're drop downs. People can click on the blog parent category to see every blog in order. Or they can go to the subcategory, also in order, but then organized by category. I'll select. Obviously, you don't want to categorize. That's amateur. Don't use categorize. I'm gonna select those two, add to menu, put them under the block. And that is that I just drag that they're below block. But be careful because I could put one below another one. And now what I have is a submenu of a submenu. I'm going to make sure that they're under the same level, the same indentation. Now these two will be drop-downs of that one. A moment ago, this one was a drop-down of this one. Nope, we want them together here, a part of block. Under tags, if I want tags, I could do select those tags as well. And if I'm using formats, I haven't added any to using formats besides standard, so they're all standard. And if you make changes to your menu, you want to save the menu. Okay, so um, WordPress is uh, very popular because it's powerful, it's customizable. Right now, we are all looking at the same design. If you do visit site, everyone's got the same design. Let's, let's, let's explore themes, which are the different designs. The cool thing is that if I create the, this content, it then can easily migrate to a new design. In the old days of web design, if I was using something classic like Dreamweaver, I would create a design, and it was very hard to separate the design and the content. I'd have to recreate the page with a new design. With WordPress, it's separate. The content is separate than the design because of the database we created earlier. The database is storing everything, and it doesn't care the connection to some degree. There's an entry in the database that says theme equals this one. And when we make a change, then it'll just say theme equals that one, and everything else is the same. The links are the same, the content is the same, but the design can change relatively easy. Let's make sure we're in the dashboard. Let's go under Appearance, Themes. Let's go here. Themes under Appearance. We have these built-in ones, 2017, 2015, 2016. Well, this is what we look like right now. Maybe we'll want to look like this. So hover over 2015, and you will see Activate. We have a preview, which is not that interesting, but click on Activate on the theme, and then Visit Site. So according to the preview, I'm going to get a cool graphic and a sidebar and everything. Let me visit the site. Uh, it doesn't look as cool as the preview. Well, that's normal. That's normal. That's like when you, uh, when you see a tasty hamburger in the commercial, and you buy the hamburger, and the meat is falling out of the bun, and all of that. Well, false advertising. 
the, uh, the design over here has been customized to look nice. The building blocks are here, like there's a spot where I'll be able to add a picture, and the sidebar kind of looks okay, but I, I don't see my menu items. So when we get a brand new theme, we usually have to fix a few things. We have to fix, number one, usually the menu. One thing that doesn't really transfer that well from theme to theme is the menu. So when that's important enough for me to note it here, yes? How do you get that? Themes, and then change the theme. I chose the 2015 theme. Under Appearance, then Themes. So I'm going to uh, make the note. Uh, always check the, the menus when you switch themes. So when, I, when I'm under Appearance and I switch between themes, let's say I go to 2016, activate 2016, it's not going to look exactly how the design is there, and especially the menus. So I'm going to activate 2015. Um, your menu still exists, and it's attached to 2017. But going to 2015, activating 2015, now there's an issue here. So under menus, my menu's there, but it's not activated anywhere. It was a moment ago on primary menu. Actually, I think it was called top menu, wasn't it? On the other design, it was top menu. Question. So it was the top menu on the other one, and here it's called primary menu, so I'll activate it and save. And then when I visit site, this menu that I designed now will transfer, now will be activated in the in this new design, the 2015 design. So visit site, there it is. Now this menu design is different than 2017. 2017 had it horizontal. 2015 design has it vertical. And instead of them, these things just dropping down automatically, I have to click here for them to open. Oh, and the, and the, and the categories description appears by default in this design. It didn't in the other design. So you see that. Number one thing to do is to check your... Um, is to check your your theme, your theme menus. So let's look at the other theme, twenty sixteen, and you need to do the same thing. Appearance. Actually, there's a shortcut here if you notice. When I'm under a visit site, I can go directly to, uh, to themes. I don't have to go to the dashboard, then appearance and themes. I get some shortcuts here. When I'm under visit site, I get some shortcuts. I can go quickly back to themes and activate uh, 2016. Before I waste my time, I should go to menus. And most likely, you will see your main menu has not been activated yet. This will be remembered now, but since we never had that theme active before, it was never set. Now that I set it and save it and switch between menus, then it, uh, switch between themes, then it will remember once we set it at least once. So I set the primary menu. I visit the site. This design looks like that, and this one has a horizontal menu at the top right over there. So 
notice the design here. These menus are drop-downs, they look a little different. Again, the design looks really boring. Well, I didn't fully customize it. If you notice, we won't spend too much time just yet, but each one of these designs has a customize button. And if I click on those, then you've got various things that we can change. Click these various things to change, colors to change. So if I make any changes, I save the change. Again, don't worry about this too much because these, these three built-in themes that are here are OK. They're not that flashy. We're going to look at some flashier, more interesting themes first. So I won't customize yet. I'm going to go back to the themes. This is not the only themes that we have to work with. We have add a new theme here. But we have the button up there, add a new theme. Go back to themes in your appearance and then add new. And now we get the theme marketplace. Featured themes, this is connecting back to wordpress.org, behind the scenes actually. And so in my case, I see Radiant Light. Looks really nice, I want it. But it probably won't look exactly the same until I customize. These are the featured ones. 2017 is featured. I can click instead to get a preview before installing or whatever, but if I get like monograph and I get a detail, it's going to give me a little bit of info about it, star ratings and rankings, and then a preview. Even the preview here doesn't look that nice compared to, compared to that preview. So we have like news, mix, light, preview that. Again, even they don't make it look as nice as their thumbnail, I guess. Res in, re, rest info, looks like that, it's looking nicer. So it gives you a preview, what it kind of looks like. Any of these that you like, then you can click install. But before that, these, these are all under featured. If you look under popular, I've got three of the popular ones installed and a couple of other ones. I believe you will see how popular... Um, like this is a GoDaddy theme. Who makes these themes? Companies or regular people, if you look at the details. The Me Grill made this theme. And apparently Activation is a theme that GoDaddy made. The GoDaddy domain company. With all of these themes out there. latest. So people are making, people and companies are publishing themes all the time. And we're going to see that with many aspects of WordPress there are there are two versions of things. So usually in WordPress we have free and premium. Themes, plugins, etc. Many good basic features active. More and better themes are better features active. There's actually one in the middle, freemium. Many good basic features, uh, basic to intermediate features, payment <coughs> encouraged for advanced features. Payment encouraged for advanced features. There's a cottage industry of people creating themes and giving away a free one, and the free one works really well. But if you wanted a little bit extra, that's when they're going to charge you $20, $50, $150. It depends on, on the theme and many factors. But a lot of people work really well with the free version. Even premium ones are not that expensive when you give you more features. You pay one time, and you get a bunch of extra features. 
So what I was saying previously about when someone asks a question in these classes, I often say, it depends on the theme. Because a theme may have some cool design or feature or widget or plugin, etc. And uh, the more you pay, the more it, it can give you features. So in the middle, there's freemium, which gives you a lot of good features. And they ask for maybe like a donation and such, and you get more features. Often what happens when you go to the freemium version, you get tech support. So the free one, you're kind of on your own. How does it work? How do I set it up? How do I change the design? Then you buy a little bit, you buy the freemium version, and what happens there is then you get tech support from the designer that tells you exactly what to change, how to change, to make it look like how you want. That's very common to do. Usually you're going to see it when you look at the details. Now all of these right now are free. If there was one to pay, you would definitely see a dollar right there. But oftentimes now it's more popular that it's going to be freemium, so usually you'll read somewhere in the description that you get extra features. So on any one of these, let's say I like one called Brittany Light. The way you use them is you click Install. It's going to connect back to wordpress.org, it's going to download it, it's going to set it up, and then you have to activate it. Just like we had 2017 active, but 2015 and 16 were not active. You can have as many themes as you want installed, but only one active at a time. So see that. I've installed and I've activated Brittany theme, and the other ones are deactivated really nice on the preview. I will visit site. Well, I should set my menu, but I'm going to visit site, and oh, the menu kind of came through. That's nice. Top text over here. This is another example where the top text is in caps. Side items, color design, footer. Often what's very common uh, going, free, going into freemium is being able to customize more of the colors and also being able to remove some of the branding. And I want to tell everyone that this was designed by CSS Igniter. Even simple things like that, if I want to change some colors or, you know, boxes of content, that's the freemium version. So my blog looks like that. The Read More is a different design. Yes? Most likely I have to go into Customize, and then probably under Header, uh, let's see where. Menu, site identity. Yeah, there's no logo. So they're not giving you the logo in the example thumbnail because it's their logo. So then we have to figure out somewhere in the customized screen how to get it completely like the original thumbnail. When you put that image to I have to, I've never used this theme before, but I have to look somewhere around here where the picture is selectable. Site icon, logo top. Yeah, probably in one of these. When you click select, it will upload it and it'll automatically go into the media library. <clears throat> it's just another example that the theme preview here looks really nice. But we have to kind of set it up a bit to look the same. That's why right. customize is shown right away. So we're going to take uh, one more break in a moment. When we come back, I'd like you to kind of browse the thumbnail, uh, browse the themes a little bit, and choose a theme just to customize yourself a bit. But after the break, it's eight forty-one. We'll take a ten more ten-minute break one more time, and then we'll be back. Mm -hmm.